Hi everyone. Uh, this this week we're going to talk about natural and and quasi experiments. Uh, so we left off last week with the uh, <clears throat> with the randomized experiment and and sort of the the way in which that is the sort of gold standard um, design of a study for demonstrating cause and effect because it involves uh, intervening in the world in order to try to make something happen, and then randomizing, random assignment, randomizing people between a treatment group and a control group in order to um, get a good estimate of, a, of the counterfactual. And those sort of two things together, sort of the planned intervention, intervening in the world in order to make something happen, and then using random assignment to create statistically equivalent groups so that you can get a good estimate of the counterfactual. Those two, two things together make the randomized experiment, sort of the gold standard for cause and effect uh, evidence. Um, but there are limitations to randomized experiments, and they're not, there are ethical limitations. Uh, it's not always possible to um, 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 intervene and, and, and to experiment with certain kinds of policy changes or interventions. Some things are not, you know, um, acceptable to do ethically, and and then there are practical limitations. It's in in implementing policies, public policies, and public programs because of justice considerations and political considerations. It's not always possible to purely randomly assign people so that some get a program and, and others don't. Um, and uh, and so for for both ethical and logistical reasons, uh, there are situations, in fact, a fair number of situations where randomized experiments um, cannot be done. And and so what we're going to look at this week is, is a sort of set of studies that tries to um, tries to take advantage of some of the, the, the features of a randomized experiment that give it good uh, cause and effect um, evidence. But, but to do that in situations in where, in which either the researcher can't um, uh, 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 intervene or can't experiment with with a with an intervention, or in which a random assignment is is not not feasible, and and these these types of studies are broadly referred to as either natural or quasi experiments, and I'll explain a bit about that distinction. But they they fall short of the pure randomized experiment, but yet uh, many times they can have um, similar advantages and 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 can be more um, realistically um, implemented in, in a lot of situations. So so here's the over, overview. We're going to talk uh, about what, what defines a natural and quasi-experiment. Uh, we'll look at the internal validity of natural and quasi-experiments and kind of, and I'll, you know, introduce you to that concept of internal validity. And then we'll look at the generalizability of natural and quasi-experiments. And it turns out that many times they're more generalizable because they typically involve large-scale real policy changes. And then there are we're going to we're going to look at a a range of the various types of natural and quasi experiments. There's lots uh, lots of types of natural and quasi experiments. And then maybe we'll look a a little bit more closely at uh, difference and differences kind of uh, strategy, instrumental variables and a bit about the ethics of natural and quasi experiments. Okay, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the definition of of of, of a natural uh, and, and versus a quasi uh, experiment. Um, now let, let me just say, uh, uh, broadly speaking, these, these are studies that have, they resemble, resemble randomized experiments, as I, as I mentioned earlier. And they typically re resemble them because there's some kind of change in the world, some kind, um, some kind of either intervention or, or natural change in the world. That typically happens to one group uh, but not another uh, similar group. So it has sort of elements of that resemble an experiment. There, there, there's a, a change or an intervention that happens to one group, not another, and and that allows for sort of elements of the ex logic of an experiment to be applied, even though um, it's not. These are not purely, um, uh, strictly speaking, randomized experiments. Now, so. 
So many people use these terms rather interchangeably, natural or quasi-experiment, or naturally occurring quasi-experiment, or, or quasi-natural experiment. They, they, they get sort of blended together and used inconsistently a lot. It, um, and uh, so that just be aware that you'll 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 see that in, in the research literature, uh, but but we try to make a distinction because they think it's helpful in in sort of understanding and also looking for uh, evidence of this kind. So um, in a natural experiment, uh, uh, as we define it, the independent variable, um, the the x variable, is not a planned uh, intervention. Uh, um, aimed at influencing the outcome y. So this is not a, in a natural experiment, it's not a, a planned intervention to influence y. Okay, so uh, we give the example of a, a casino opening on an um, Indian nation and how the uh, cash payments from the studio, um, from the uh, casino, uh, lifted the um, uh, incomes of families um, who were living on the um, in the Indian nation, but not nearby families, who were otherwise in a similar kind of economy and similar economic situation, and um, but obviously the casino, even though it's architecturally planned and it's a financially planned, it's not a, a it's not an intervention to influence mental health. The researchers just took advantage of the fact that it happened to look at the interesting question of what happens to families when their income suddenly goes up. And uh, that's based on an interest in observational data that showed that poor families often have a, uh, suffer more from certain mental health problems. And is that caused by their poverty status or not? And to what extent? Um, those were the questions that motivated the researchers. And they um, you know, paid attention, looked around, maybe even sort of lucked out because this sudden change happened um, in a way um, in an area where they were already collecting data. And it, it created a condition that was similar to experiment, an experiment because the, the cash payments happened in, to one group that they were studying, but not another group. And um, they could take advantage of that to look at the effect of increased income on, on, on mental health. And uh, there's, there's another interesting example um, in, in the, um, of the, uh, um, in, in the article on the, um, the effect of an oil shock in, in um, in, in West Africa, where it, it, it happened to one uh, West African country and not another. Uh, one, one country discovered oil, the other did not. And the, the researchers were interesting, interested in the effect of sort of um, sudden oil wealth on political corruption. And that, again, it's a, the, or the discovery of oil was not an intervention designed to you know, increase or decrease political corruption. Um, the researchers took just took advantage of it as a, as a naturally occurring change that happened to one country, not the other. Um, so that, so that, and 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 looked at their dependent variable, which is uh, um, political corruption. So that that's a characteristic, in our view, of the natural experiment. The researchers taking advantage of an, a natural change in the world that usually happens one place but not another, and but that change in the world is not a planned intervention, right? Uh, aimed at influencing the outcome. Now that contrasts with a quasi-experiment. And quasi-experiments are studies that where the independent variable x is a planned intervention to influence the outcome y. So if, if it could be a program, it could be a policy change, it could be a training program. Um, those are, are, are aimed at doing, ha, at influencing an outcome. So we give the example in the book for, of, of this HUD-sponsored resident management program, which is designed, was which was a funding program designed to encourage residents of public housing to manage their own um, buildings, and it was designed to improve the quality of life in public housing. So that that's a planned intervention, right? And and the and so uh, what makes it a quasi-experiment is if the researchers find a way to compare the planned intervention to similar groups of people who did not get the planned intervention and then therefore sort of try to create or resemble sort of some of the conditions in an experiment. And uh, this can happen with policing initiatives, gun control laws, speeding laws, where, 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 where there's a policy change designed to do something, designed to influence an outcome. It happens in one jurisdiction, not another. Um, and that creates conditions that are similar to an experiment. 
Um, and it's called a, it's called a quasi experiment because people are not really randomized to to be in the program or not be in the program. Usually, the program's implemented in one jurisdiction or one neighborhood or one city or even one state, and and not in a nearby state. And the researchers take advantage of the sort of change in one area versus no change in the other area to 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 do a kind of uh, uh, quasi experimental um, study. Uh, but nevertheless, what what's uh, what's characteristic about these is they are policies or programs designed to influence an outcome. So, okay, let me just uh, say a bit more about the distinction between quasi and natural experiments. Um, again, not everyone makes this distinction, um, but it does encourage program planners to be alert to ways to create uh, strong uh, quasi experiments. For example, um, uh, uh, policymakers or program plan planners can decide to provide the treatment to some, but, but not to all and, and and often you know resources are limited anyway and some kind of allocation is needed so if that's done with a little bit of a, a alertness to what um, setting up a, a, an experimental comparison that could be useful um, random assignment it turns out is f is not a bad way it's a pretty fair way to allocate uh, limited resources so even at a at a group level it may be useful to randomly assign the program to some groups or clusters and not to others. So example, for example, if you have a new curriculum in a school system, you might just, when you have only a small number of schools, you might randomly give it to a couple schools and not to others and, and just to, um, um, or if a small you know, jurisdiction, a small city is implementing a new policing strategy, you might try doing that in a couple jurisdictions or a couple precincts and, and not others. So even if random assignment can be done just on the basis of a few units or a few groups or clusters, that, that, that can still um, create a pretty good quasi-experiment. Uh, sometimes uh, policymakers or planners can control the timing or rollout of a program. It can start earlier in some locations than in others. Um, and that again can be used to sort of set up a, a kind of quasi-experimental comparison. And another important thing is to gather outcomes both before the program is implemented and, and not, not just after, because it turns out that having measures of the outcome before uh, an, an intervention is made uh, um, um, brings a lot of advantages to, to the study. Having that sort of pretest measure is a useful thing.